I'm back with Raj Rajaratnam. We're talking about his uh, new book, Uneven Justice. Uh, Raj, I mean, when you're looking at a prosecution of a case like yours, I mean, you've got some fairly vague laws that are against insider trading. But since it is the job of your firm to do research into what's happening with companies, who's going up, who's coming out with new products, the line between insider trading and legitimate research would appear to be a somewhat fuzzy one. Part of what I get out of your book is that what the government was able to do is take things that on that on examination are quite legitimate, but portray them to a jury that doesn't know how Wall Street works and make it look like, whoa, we got a smoking gun on this guy. Um, and, and you give example after example of this. So it looks like what the government is doing is preying on the ignorance of the jury to create a false picture. Absolutely right. Let me um, remind you, Dinesh, in 2020, 10 or 11 years after my arrest, Mr. Preet Bharara assembled a task force with my judges, some of the prosecutors, and their conclusion was insider trading laws are murky and there's incredible confusion among the market participants. Now, the question I have for him is if you felt it was murky in 2020, in 20, uh, 2009, when you were the US attorney, why did you indict 80 people? Have you ever reflected on the human cost, the cost to the family, the cost to the defendants, the uh, cost to their dependents? It just seems very callous. And there was another South Asian uh, gentleman who was indicted and he committed suicide, right? Now, when we talk about accountability, very few people dwell on the human costs. And there, therein lies um, the old axiom, absolute power corrupts absolutely. I mean, toward the end of the book, I found this very revealing. You show how many of the people who used this playbook against you were in fact rewarded uh, for it. And I think this is probably why they they didn't care a whole lot that they were exploiting murky laws. The, one of the prosecutors becomes a law partner at Gibson Dunn. So he goes into a big um, partner salary. The FBI agent who had lied, uh, he becomes promoted. He's off to Washington, D.C., big office, uh, big promotion. In fact, this is the funniest part, or at least funny in a certain level. The judge Holwell, he leaves the bench uh, and he sets up a private practice as a kind of consultant on insider trading, and his sole experience of insider trading is your one case. So suddenly this guy becomes a kind of, you know, he's raking it in now as a kind of consultant on the subject. So the ambition on the other side, it looks to me, is the real payoff. And this is what this is why these people do what they do. Dinesh, you couldn't make this up, really. I mean, it's just so amazing that they get away with this. And then they called the defendant greedy when I didn't make a single penny. All the money, even if I was guilty of everything, went to the investors. And I have given more to charity than the entire 60 or 70 million that they alleged the fund made. And also, they themselves admit it was 0.01% of my trades over a five-year period. All proceeds from this book are going to charity to fight for justice. I think every American should be concerned about the FBI lying on the wiretaps because tomorrow they could wiretap you by lying on an affidavit or anybody else. And that's why I feel compelled to speak out. Now, one tactic that the prosecutors use in these cases and, and um, is that they, they try to get people that you have dealt with to turn against you. In the book, you describe this fellow, Anil Kumar, who was arrested around the same time that you were. Um, and this Anil Kumar then meets with a couple of friends of yours, and he makes the following point. He says, hey, listen, I can fight this case, but it's going to cost me $25 million, or I can cooperate with them in a sense, against Raj, and then I'm going to basically get off scot-free or close to scot-free. And so what happens is that there now becomes an incentive by getting these other guys to turn against you 
and, and, and I assume that that truth is not going to be a, a, a constraint. In other words, they're not going to hesitate to to feed the narrative because that's how they that's the price that they pay for not being prosecuted themselves. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He was a star witness in my case. In another case, in the same district with the same stocks, and he recanted his testimony, saying that I called Raj to find out what was going on because he was a savvy tech investor. Now I got seven, I got 11 years sentenced. I spent seven and a half years in prison. Dinesh, I slept so well every night when I was in prison. Anil Kumar called my wife in tears and said, I'm sorry, I sent an innocent man to prison. And we have court records where he recants what he said, but then the courts say, oh, after three years, his memory may not have been that sharp, but they were willing to listen to his memory of something that happened 10 years ago. So this system is stacked. Raj, what I find moving about your book and powerful is that you conclude by saying, and it would be so easy for you to say, you know, this shows me that I should never have come to America. I should have made my fortune somewhere else. But you're as pro-American today as the day you came to America looking for opportunity. Explain how someone's patriotism like yours could remain intact despite this horrific experience. Dinesh, I truly believe this is the greatest country in the world. 300 or 350 million Americans live here, and that's about 5% of the world's population. I can speak out if I see injustice. I can't control anything, everything that happens in my life, but what I can control is how I react to it. I love this country. I feel that what happened to me in the last 10 years has given me a passion to fight for something that I think is far more important than Raj Rajaratnam, which is the uneven justice and the lack of any accountability for the prosecution. You know, before I got arrested, I thought the FBI was good. Only bad people went to prison. The prosecutors were good. And I was so naive. Now I think a certain sliver of people who bend the rules should be held accountable. This doesn't mean that America is not as great a country as it was when I came here. And I am so grateful to be here. Raj, thank you very much for joining me. This is a this is a convincing book from start to finish. And it was a pleasure reading it. And I, I felt very bad. And of course, I identified with your story tremendously. I wish you all the best. And, um, and thank you for joining the podcast. Thank you. Happy holidays, Dinesh.